Ready for History, our last subject of the day um, for Friday, March 27th. Last one. Here we go. All right, page 306. We're talking about Alexander Graham Bell. Um, yesterday, we stopped at page 306, and you were to read um, where we stopped. Um, so we'll just kind of pick up there. We were talking about how he was um, an inventor. He was very curious how things worked, and remember that he had a um, connection there with uh, family members that were hard of hearing, and so that was an interest for him on how to help people. Remember, we were talking back on page 303. Um, if, he had, if he could hear a, a song on the piano, he could play it. I mean, he was very in tune with sounds and different things like that. Um, he was born in Scotland, and his mother was mostly deaf. So you were you know, thinking about going through those things, how he, they had to find ways to adapt. They had to find ways to be able to communicate with each other. And when you need these things, necessity is the mother of invention. When you need to be able to do something and you don't have a way, you start thinking. The wheels start turning. How can we do this? Um, so remember on page 306 that they um, moved from, they were in Canada. Um, on page 305, they were in Canada for a short while, then they moved. Um, it, Mr. Bell loved Boston. He was there because it reminded him of London, where he had once lived. Now, um, Alexander Graham Bell, it said, also started doing experiments with sound. If a piano can make high and low sounds, could telegraph machines also send high and low sounds? So he became a tutor there. Um, he, instead of inventing a new kind of telegraph machine, he accidentally invented the first telephone. Yes. He, d he did invent the first telephone, and we're very thankful for that. As we said yesterday, the telephone has really evolved um, and, you know, has really come a long ways from just that, you know, one piece to, you know, what we have today. Just a tremendous, I mean, our whole life is on, on that phone. So it's very, 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 you know, um, great. It's just a, a, a small word. It's just a privilege to have that now. Um, Bell Telephone Company on page 307. We talked about a patent patent yesterday about how to keep your, if you um, invent something, you don't want anyone to be able to um, reproduce your idea and make money from it as well. You need to put a patent on it, and that keeps that um, invention safe for you, that idea safe for you, so that you can continue. Mr. Bell took his invention to Europe. He met with Queen Victoria to show her how the telephone worked. When he returned to America, he realized he needed more money and equipment to make his company a success. He found men to invest their money, and the Bell Telephone Company was formed. <laughs> Couldn't think of that last word there when I turned the page. Um, on page 308, we'll come back to that in just a second. Page 309, other inventions. Mabel and Alexander Graham Bell had two little girls. Soon after their first son was born, he became very sick and died from breathing problems. Because of that, Mr. Bell invented what he called the vacuum jacket, which would help people with weak lungs. What do we do with our lungs? We breathe. That's a necessity. He hoped to save others who had the same illness that his son had. He also invented an audiometer, which was good to give hearing tests. You know, when you go to the doctor and they raise, you know, you raise your hand when you hear a sound, that's that. Mr. Bell invented a type of metal detector, uh, which was the first kind of x-ray machine. Later in life, he would also build several kinds of airplanes. Wow. He never stopped experimenting or working. At the age of 75, Alexander Graham Bell died. Many people remember him as the inventor of the telephone, but he did more. Many, many more inventions than just the telephone. So we look back at the modern marvels there, and we have the first telephone. And then if you look, it kind of goes down into a sweep there. At the bottom, you have what we have as our modern day phone here. There's been a lot of development and uh, different types of um, 
and there's been um, improvements, modernizations to it. I can remember, and I, I want to show you, Mr. Upchurch has one of these in, in his office, but I have we have a rotary phone in there where you can actually dial out. So, you know, it's just been a long time. If you look at the black phone there, now I don't remember the, the one with the little piece that comes out. Um, and you talk into it like on Andy Griffith. But the one that has, I, we have one of those. I'll show you one of those. And from there on, I can remember all of those phones. That bag phone there, you see that um, phone that has the antenna on it? It's like in a square black box. I had one of those. thought I was something in my car. Um, I bet your parents remember this stuff, too. Um, going through that little flip phone, I had that thing popped out, and you did... And look, when you're our age, you'll look back at, at this and you'll say, man, we thought we had it made with that phone and look at what we have now. So things are always improving. You know, things are always moving forward. Um, you know, we can always um, improve and upgrade. So just just wait. You just know telling in your lifetime what you'll see. We've had the discussion before in our classroom that you can pick this phone up and know more about me than you need to know. You can know what my heart rate is when I exercise, what time I go to bed, what time I wake up. Just amazing what you can know from a phone. And just to think, it started with the first telephone and how it has evolved over the years. So let's look at page 309 for today. We're going to do our comprehension check. And we're done for the day. We are finished. All right, number one, we're matching. Right, um, method of teaching the deaf how to speak. Method of teaching the deaf how to speak. So we look, remember that was visible speech. That is letter G. That is where um, Alexander Graham Bell knew that your mouth would make certain um, movements. You know, when you're getting ready to say a word that starts with the letter M, M you see that M, your mouth makes a, a certain move there. F, fly, fly. You feel your teeth touch your, your lip there. Light, light. There are different things. And people that are hard of hearing, they'll look at your mouth and they'll see those sounds. Mama. You know, you see that, that M there. It's not as pronounced, but like, can you make me a sandwich? You make those sounds with your mouth. So um, number two country the Bell family moved to when they left the poor air of London. B, Canada. That's right. They left there and they moved to Canada. Number three, protected Mr. Bell's telephone design. D, correct patent. That's just a word you have to say quick. If you try to pronounce it patent, you'll say a lot of letters patent. So that's number three, D. Number four, Mr. Bell's machine used for hearing test, A, audiometer. That's right. Number five, Mr. Bell wrote this Indian language for the first time, C, Mohawk. Mm -hmm. We talked about that yesterday. And number six, invention Mr. Bell was trying to improve when he accidentally invented the telephone. F, that's correct, the telegraph. So another great inventor, Alexander Graham Bell there. As a bonus note for you, Alexander Graham Bell invented many things, even the speedboat. His hydrofoil boat set a record for a speed of more than 70 miles per hour in 1919. Wow, 70 miles an hour on water is pretty fast, so he invented the speedboat. So if you like to go out and ride the boat, I'm kind of a slower boat myself person, but if you um, see those uh, fast boats go zooming by now, you'll know, hey, Alexander Graham Bell had a part in that. So I told you it's gonna be a short lesson today. We have finished up Alexander Graham Bell. Next week, we're gonna have to you know, kind of pull up and take a couple of quizzes do a couple of things there so make sure we're caught up. You may say, Miss Upchurch, we've already done these people. I get it. You'll already know the material. We're just going to catch up on a few things. And then next Monday, we're going to start a um, study of Booker T. Washington, um, Chapter 32. 
Booker T. Washington will discuss um, his early life and um, learn more about him. So that is the end of our um, history lesson for today. If you're at the end of the day, we're finished for the day. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Um, enjoy your day. I think it's supposed to be um, you know, a nice, pretty day for the most part. They're changing the forecast some. Try to get outside and get some exercise and fresh air so that you can get some good rest. Thank you for all your hard work this week. Thank you for the videos, watching the videos and, and the work you've sent in and what you're doing. Just try to keep up. We're one week down that quick. These will go by quickly. And um, so just keep up, keep doing your work so that when you were finished and you're ready to move to fourth grade, you're where you need to be. And so if you, if you get stuck, it's okay. It's all right. We'll figure it all out. So just have a good weekend. If you need anything, have your parents, family, whatever, text. Uh, let me know, and I will um, do my best to see what we can do to help you, okay? So, guys, guys, again, thank you so much. Hope you have a great weekend, and I look forward to seeing you back here on Monday.